A few months ago, I had the chance to fly with Aeromexico for the first time. Despite it being one of the biggest airlines in Latin America, my expectations were not very high. It is not necessarily one of those airlines that comes to mind when thinking of having a great experience, is it? Well, let me tell you the experience was, overall, very surprising for good. It had some great ups, but unfortunately, a big downside as well, which kind of ruined everything a bit. Let's run through my itinerary from Buenos Aires to Cancun and take a look at the good and not so good about Aeromexico in my experience. By the way, you can find all the videos from my trip to Mexico on the playlist linked above, including all the trip reports. Let's start with the two long haul flights. The flight to get the trip started from Buenos Aires to Mexico City was assigned on one of Aeromexico's flagship 787-9s, featuring their newest long haul cabins. The cabin itself was really nice and the seats were overall quite comfortable. Space was enough, a pillow and a blanket were provided, and the seat had pretty much everything one would expect, without being anything out of ordinary. My only negative comment about it, if I may, is about the in-flight entertainment system. The selection was not the best I've ever seen, to say it some way. Still, as I don't use the screen for more than staring at the in-flight map, it wasn't a big issue for me. Anyway, if you're flying them one or two times, you will be able to find something to entertain you. There was a feature I liked, which I hadn't seen on any other airline before, which was the menu. I found it cool. Speaking about the menu, the food was certainly the highlight of this flight. We were served dinner and then breakfast, both hot meals with two choices each. I hadn't seen two hot meals in a long time, as it is something that airlines are tending to eliminate. They usually no longer serve breakfast, but just a snack prior to landing. Aeromexico, in fact, did serve a hot breakfast, which I really liked, and there was even another option available. Still, my takeaway is not the taste of the meals, which was fine, but the fact that they served two hot meals on this 9-hour flight. I was very surprised by Aeromexico in this regard, and I believe it is how things should be done. Big congrats to Aeromexico for nailing it, and in addition, for those of you into cocktails, these are complimentary, another thing you don't usually see in economy class these days. All that mentioned, that was a really positive first impression of Aeromexico. Another thing I want to tell you, which I also narrated in the troop report, is that this flight was changed to a 787-9 from a 787-8 a few days in advance. We had paid for our seat reservations, and one of our seats ended up being a bulkhead seat in the Dash 9 version. And like what other airlines would have done, Aeromexico kept it for us. This was again very surprising, because those seats cost extra money. It was a well-handled situation. Let's now pass on to the second long-haul flight for our return home. This was on the other variant of the Boeing 787, the Dash 8 version, which features Aeromexico's older long-haul cabins. Before the flight, I thought it would be a downgrade from the 787-9, but to my surprise, it wasn't. We were welcomed by a pillow, blanket and bottle of water at the seat, and I was surprised straight away by how spacious the seat was. This being a daytime flight, I never thought it would be as comfortable as it ended up being. This was the legroom mid-flight, for instance. I could easily stretch, it was extremely comfortable. Even better than the 787-9 if you ask me. The only downside of the seat was again the in-flight entertainment system, which was even more dated than the one on the Dash 9. The amount of content was a bit more limited and, for example, the map wasn't interactive. Still, it wasn't a big problem for me. What's more, they had two live TV channels, one of which was broadcasting sports, so I could even watch some live tennis for a while, which definitely made my flight even better. Something I didn't mention in the other flight is the fact that before departure, the crew handed out not only headphones, but also a rest kit, featuring an eye mask and earplugs. I really didn't expect to receive something like it, and it definitely adds a touch to the experience. I also didn't mention the Wi-Fi on board, just because it didn't work on that flight. On my flight back home though, it did work. There were two plans available for a cost, and 10 megabytes of free messaging for free, which honestly wasn't much. 
catering service was again really good, this time serving breakfast and dinner. Both meals had two options, both were served hot, and both my French toast for breakfast and pasta for dinner were very good. Very well done by Aeromexico again, on what is seemingly a consistent meal offering among all their flights. That being it for the two long haul flights, which as you have seen, were very good, let's now take a look at the short haul domestic flights. On both our way to and back from Cancun, the flights were operated by the Boeing 737 MAX 8, an aircraft I was very much looking forward to flying. I had seen trip reports in YouTube, and Aeromexico seemed to have a great product on board. However, as I boarded my flight to Cancun in Mexico City, I got to know that they have some special, more dense cabin layouts for some domestic routes, and unfortunately, those were the planes we flew in both domestic flights. The seats on these planes were very basic and poor. Legroom was very tight, there were no charging ports, and there was not even a seat pocket. Just a mobile device holder, a space for the safety card, and stop counting. I was very much looking forward to flying the other variant, which even features IFE screens in economy, so seeing this was shocking. I didn't know about the existence of these planes, honestly. Still, for a flight of one hour and a half to two hours, it is absolutely doable. It was just not what I expected. Other than that, the service on both these flights was appropriate, with a snack and a round of drinks. Basically, what one would expect. Nothing out of the ordinary, but still, it's nice to receive something. Now, here's where the problem came. As you see, the in-flight experiences were all in all pretty good. The issue came the moment we took one of our bags from the baggage belt upon our arrival in Cancun, when we realized it had been absolutely destroyed. What happened with it, to this date, we still don't know and probably will never know by now. Very likely it was during the connection at Mexico City that it was broken, God knows with what purpose. Fortunately, no items were missing, but the bag was ruined. It had a TCA-approved padlock, so to this date, I still can't find an explanation as to why they broke it that way. There was no need to destroy it like that. Of course, we made the claim at the airport, but the attention was poor. The agent said they couldn't give us the money, just a card with some credit on it. We were asked how much the bag cost, but they only covered a percentage of it, saying they couldn't give us more due to airline policies. The credit was for half the cost of the bag, first of all, and then we were told we could extract the money from the card so that we could negotiate for a new bag better, but that wasn't possible. For you to understand, we had to replace a Calvin Klein bag for one body in the street, because that was all we could buy in Cancun for the money we were given. Being absolutely rational, it can't happen that a bag gets broken for whatever reason. But what comes into play when this happens is how the airline manages the situation. In this case, the situation was managed dreadfully. I then made a claim to Aeromexico's customer service via email, but they refused to take charge for anything because they had already given us that card with a ridiculous amount of money. Absolutely disgraceful. One more comment I'd like to add is that our bags arrived back home in Buenos Aires again with signs of bad handling. Don't get me wrong, they were not broken this time, but there's clearly something with baggage handling at Mexico City International Airport. Anyway, this is all I have to say for today. Unfortunately, this experience with the broken bag absolutely ruined our image of Aeromexico, which is a shame because the onboard experience in all four flights was really good. Have you ever flown Aeromexico? What was your experience like? Let me know in the comments section below. If you made it to this point and found this video useful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss future uploads. Thank you very much for watching until the end and I'll catch you next week for a new one. Until the next one.